Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. On this video there is lots to negotiate about. I am going to be giving you the latest news regarding Sergio Romero. Then I'm going to be giving you a bit more additional information on Gabriel Megales. Then I'm going to be giving then I'm going to be talking with you a bit more about Paul Popper. Um, a bit later on, I will be talking with you as well a bit more about Jaden Sancho from Borussia Dortmund. So, we'll start with the news on Sergio Romero. So, according to reports recently, Sergio, Sergio Romero is set to have showdown talks with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer regarding his future. Now... As you all know at the moment, Sergio Romero is our number two. Let's wait there a second. Uh, Sergio Romero is our number two goalkeeper. But uh, Dean Henderson is going to be back at Manchester United for next season. Which then means that Sergio Romero will be uh, our third choice goalkeeper. So reflects on that. I presume he'll want to leave the football club. Now, Sergio Romero's got a year left on his Manchester United contract, uh, but the club do have an option to extend it for a further year. I think this has been Sergio Romero's fifth season at Manchester United because we did get Sergio Romero back in 2015. We got him on a free transfer from San Pandora. He's also played for AZ Altmar before and he's also played for a racing club and I think he also had a loan spell with Monaco. Sergio Romero uh, does play in our cup games, doesn't he mainly? And I think he's done very, very, he did very, very well in our FA Cup games, you know, kept a hell of a lot of clean sheets. So, you know, there's a possibility chance that Sergio Romero could leave the football club in this summer transfer window. But yeah, anyway, you know, Dean Henderson, um, he's going to be coming back to Manchester United for next season, like I mentioned. Obviously, I don't know if Dean Henderson's going to be our number one for next season, but he's, he's going to battle it out with David De Gea. Um, obviously, you know, Dean Henderson's had two successful loans at Sheffield United. And I've got to make an admission regarding Dean Henderson. He has been Sheffield United's player of the season. Dean Henderson's also had other loan spells with Stockport, Grimsby and Shrewsbury. We did get Dean Henderson back in 2011 from Carlisle. We got him at just the age of 14. Now, Dean Henderson's got a contract with Man United until 2022. But Sky Sports did say earlier on this week that our contract talks with Dean Henderson have hit a crucial stage. And he says his future will be much clearer in the next couple of weeks. I think we're hoping to get Dean Henderson a new five-year contract at the football club. And reportedly Dean Henderson could be one of the highest paid goalkeepers in Europe. But there's a lot of Manchester United fans saying that Dean Henderson should be our number one for next season. Solskjaer was talking a lot about Dean Henderson prior to our game against Sheffield United. And he did say that he expects Dean Henderson to be our number one goalkeeper and England's number one goalkeeper in the future because Dean Henderson has now got that experience behind him. Uh, Chelsea, of course, are still looking to get him on the board. Uh, Chelsea are looking for a replacement for Kepa Ariza Belega. He did say uh, not too long ago that Chelsea were willing to more than double his wages. They were willing to offer him 170 grand a week. His current wages at the moment are like £70,000 a week, but Sheffield United have been paying the vast majority of that. But Dean Henson's only very, very young. You know, he's only, what, is he 22, 23? And look at how, how old Sergio Romero is. I think Sergio Romero is he like 32, 33 years of age. So, you know, Dean Henson's a good 9 or 10 years younger than Sergio Romero. But uh, to be honest with you, Dean Henson should be our number one for next season. Uh, because David De Gea, you know, has been our number one for several years. You know, this has been David De Gea's ninth season at Manchester United. You know, he's now approaching his 10th year at the football club. But we've been very, very critical of David De Gea. You know, reflects on these calamitous mistakes he has made. 
He, he's been a liability in the last couple of years. Like I've said before, David De Gea has had seven good years out of the nine years he's been at Manchester United. But David De Gea did say the other week he intends to stay at the football club for several years. You know, David De Gea has made 404 appearances for Manchester United in all competitions. And I think he's made around 300 odd appearances in the Premier League. But, you know, Solskjaer was talking about De Gea the other week, a few weeks ago now. You know, saying that he has been the best goalkeeper in the world for the last 9 or 10 years. Because De, De Gea has won everything domestically with us. He's won individual awards, reflects on his good run of performances over the years. But I did say when De Gea does eventually leave Manchester United, he will go back to Spain. You know, he will. Uh, David De Gea is the highest paid goalkeeper in the world, I think. And he is the highest paid at the club because he is on 375000 a week because he signed a four-year deal last September. But if we did sell David De Gea in this summer transfer window or we sold him you know, next year or the year after, we'd still get more than the 17 or £18 million that we paid for him from Atletico Madrid. Back in 2011 and that. So like I said, you know, Solskjaer's got a goalkeeping decision to make. Obviously, you know, we've also got um, a few other goalkeepers. Obviously, you know, we've got Lee Grant. I think I recall him only playing once and that was against FD Astana in the Europa League group stage. Uh, Lee Grant, obviously, you know, was out, he was out with injury for a long time. I think we did get him from Stoke. I think we did get him... In uh, Jose Mourinho's final transfer window when he was at the club, uh, Joe Pereira obviously know he's out on loan with Hearts at the moment. So now let's delve into news on Gabriel Magalhaes. So, according to reports, Gabriel Magalhaes is set to make a decision on his future in the coming days. Now, like I updated you yesterday. He said that his representatives were in the UK to negotiate a move. So I believe that his representatives have had talks with Manchester United, they've also had talks with Arsenal and they've also had talks with Everton because they are the teams that are monitoring Gabriel Magalhaes. It did recently say from Sky Sports earlier on this week that PSG were in for him and also to Napoli were in for him. And it actually no, did say that Napoli uh, were emerged as the favourites to get the player. Don't forget, Napoli have already signed Victor Oshiman from Lille for around £45 million. It did also say that uh, we've tabled a £27 million offer for Gabriel Magalhaes, uh, plus bonuses included. And that is a cheap solution. Uh, Gabriel Magalhaes is only the age of 22, very young. He is a centre-half and Manchester United are in search for a centre-half, despite the fact that we have got seven centre-halves in the team. We're looking for someone to go alongside Harry Maguire in our back line because, quite frankly, Victor Lindelof's not on Harry Maguire's level. You know, Eric Bay, you know, he's always injured. So if we could get a centre-half, you know, that would be very, very beneficial. Uh, I think Gabriel Magalhaes uh, got the player of the season for Lille. Uh, by the way, Lille did not get qualification for the Champions League, so they are into the Europa League for next season. I think they did, by the way, finish fourth. Gabriel Magalhaes has got a contract with Lille until 2023, so still a few years left on his contract. And Lille paid £1.5 million for him, I think from Avia. Um, he also had loan spells with Troyes and Dynamo Zagreb. He has made around 52 appearances for Lille, as Gabriel Magal has since his arrival. I think he's enjoyed around three seasons now with Lil. So there's actually no chance we could get him on the board. There really, really is. But do you think he'd go well alongside Harry Maguire in our back line? Um, obviously, there's been other centre-halves on our agenda. You know, Tyro Mins has been on our agenda from Villa. Uh, Kaladu Koulibaly, you know, Manchester United is still in for him. I think Napoli's present president has uh, revealed uh, their asking price, and Napoli no, will not let Caladu Kulabali go for less than eighty one million pounds. But to be honest with you, I don't see us getting Caladu Kulabali. So that's the latest news on Gabriel Magalhaes. Uh Let me just give you some news on Paul Pogba. So I think now uh, Paul Pogba is staying at Manchester United. 
uh, now that we have got qualification for the Champions League. You know, if we didn't get qualification for the Champions League, then there may still still have been a possibility chance that Paul Popper could have left the football club. Now, like I said, Tino, I didn't really have a perception on Paul Popper for the vast majority of the season because obviously he was out with the ankle injury. You know, Popper sustained quite a few injuries as a Manchester United player. Now, I think we need to get Paul Popper a new long-term contract, you know, to end the uncertainty over his future. Now, there were stories coming out quite a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks before the season finished, and it said that, you know, Popper was close to signing a five-year contract at Manchester United, and also Fabrizio Romano was talking, and he said that Manchester United want to extend Paul Popper's contract, and he said apparently his agent, Mini Raliola, is waiting for the offer. Now, as it stands at the moment, Popper's just got under a year left on his Manchester United contract, but the club do have an option to extend it for a further year. Now, at one point, it was looking very imminent that Popper was going to be leaving the football club because, obviously, you know, last summer, he was relentlessly linked to have moved to Real Madrid. Obviously, you know, Paul Popper did say last summer he was seeking for a new challenge and he publicly admitted that he wanted to leave the football club. Uh, there was also a lot of narratives about him possibly going back to Juventus because Paul Popper did enjoy four good years with Juventus. Also, PSG, Barcelona and Inter Milan have been in for Paul Popper before. But I think now, you know, like I said, he will stay at Manchester United. Popper's on just under 300 grand a week at the moment, so he is one of our highest paid players. And he's our most expensive signing at the moment because we did pay £89 million for him. I think uh, towards the start of the resumption of the season, Paul Popper made a fantastic impact. You know, I thought he did well in the 1-1 draw with Tottenham when he came on. I also thought he did well in the Sheffield United game. I think he had the most touches in the Sheffield United game. You know, he also did well in the Villa game when won 3-0 because he scored his first goal for Manchester United since April 2019. But I think in, towards the end of the season, you know, Paul Popper did look a bit off the pace. But I think his combination with Bruno Fernandes in our midfield has been absolutely fantastic. And I think it's probably the, the best midfield partnership in the Premier League. So I think now Paul Pogba is staying at Manchester United. Uh, you know the ongoing situation with Jadon Sancho, don't you? Um, obviously, you know, there's been reports coming out earlier on this week uh, saying that Manchester United and Borussia Dortmund have agreed an initial £60 million fee for Jadon Sancho. But uh, we need to you know, come to, an, come to an agreement on the remainder of the deal. You know, We need to sort the add-ons in that out. I think it did say there's going to be like 30 or £40 million in add-ons. So the deal in total is going to be worth around £100 million, maybe just over £100 million. Obviously, the add-ons are for Jadon Sancho's appearances, how Manchester United progress in the Premier League and how we progress in the Champions League. Because throughout this Jadon Sancho transfer saga, you know, Borussia Dortmund have remained ruthless over their valuation. You know, they have said several times that they do want over £100 million for the player. On the other hand, though, we said for a long, a long time, you know, we are not willing to meet Borussia Dortmund's asking price. He said recently, you know, that we'd set our limit. We was only willing to pay £80 million for Sancho. Uh, before that, he said we was only willing to pay £50 million. Uh, there was reports coming from the German press earlier on this week, you know, saying that Man United had an £89 million bid turned down for Sancho. These reports were coming from the German press, but we actually, you know, denied this. But it's very imperative that we get Sancho on the board because he is our number one priority target and he has been our number one priority target for a while. Uh, the deadline, Borussia Dortmund have already set the deadline for the sale of Sancho. Uh, they've said, you know, Man United have got until the 10th of August to sign the player. We've already revealed that we are willing to give Jadon Sancho the number seven. Because I think he'd full full the number seven fantastically well. You know, we have had a lot of good number sevens up and down the generations. You know, Sancho still got a contract with Borussia Dortmund until 2022. You know, 
Obviously, now Dortmund only paid £8 million for so the player. They paid £8 million for him from Man City back in 2017. But this has now been his third season in Germany with Dortmund. And analyse his performances in the few years he's been with them. His valuation has persistently grown. But I've outlined the reasons why I want Sancho at Man United. is because he's well proven in the Premier League. And he's also got a very, very good friendship with Marcus Rashford. Uh, don't forget recently, Sancho was on a private jet. And he also put a picture of him and Rashford on social media uh, when they was on England duty. So that, you know, did fuel quite a lot of speculation up. <laughs> but yeah, you know, it does now say that the fee has been agreed. So probably, you know, Sancho will be our first signing in this summer transfer window. But I said, you know, if we didn't get qualification for the Champions League, you know, then I don't think there'd have been any chance of Man United getting Sancho. But we've got Champions League football on the board, you know, it increases our chances now a lot of getting Sancho on the board. Don't forget, Kicker did recently say, which I think is a German outlet, and they said that Sancho prefers a move to Liverpool over Manchester United. But I don't think Liverpool want him enough. But we know that Fabrizio Romano has spoken about the Sancho transfer saga quite a few times. Also to uh, Christian Fark spoken about the other week. Uh, Simon Stone from the BBC has also spoken about it. So there you go. But uh, Solskjaer know, wants this deal uh, done quickly for Sancho. He wants this deal done quickly, he really, really does. He wants, his deal, he wants his deal done quickly. So you already know the news regarding Sancho, don't you? But if we do get him on the board, it will be Manchester United's most expensive signing. You know, like I said, we've looked at a few alternatives to Sancho because I will make the admission, you know, these cheaper solutions than Sancho out there. So that is the latest on all of, you know, that, what I've uh, mentioned to you. Um, but I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is ruined, by the way, about Chelsea's transfer plans. Uh, because he knows, you know, teams are going to recruit in this summer transfer window. And obviously, you know, Chelsea have already done good recruitment, you know. So far, they've made two signings. Obviously, you know, they got Hakim Ziyech back in February for around 37 or £38 million. Pounds. Um, obviously, you know, they got Werner, you know, for £48 million pounds from Lesbic. So they spent, is it around £80 million pounds there on two players? You know, Chelsea is still looking to get more, recommend more plays in. You know, they try to get Havertz from Leverkusen, uh, Ben Chaywell from Leicester. You know, Chelsea are also trying to get him. So Chelsea could be in there with a shout for next season. Um, obviously, you know, Manchester City, and they signed a couple of players. Uh, they did sign one player, but I can't remember who it was. Um, obviously, I think they've, they've got Nathan Aki now on the board. I don't know if, it, if it's official, I haven't uh, seen it recently. But uh, last time I read up about it was from the BBC and it said that Man City had their £41 million bid for Nathan Ake accepted from Bournemouth. So, yeah, it's definitely going to happen, obviously, because the BBC is a reliable uh, source. But, yeah, £41 million. And I think Ake is going to go very, very well alongside Laporte in uh, City's back line. Um, I think City are going to get Ferran Torres as well. He said for around £21 million. So... They're, yeah, they're doing good business so far. You know, City would have just been relieved to have their two-year Champions League ban um, overturned by, say, yes, because if they didn't have it overturned, then maybe, you know, they would have found it difficult, you know, to get the players that, you know, they did want to get in and all of that. Uh, Liverpool want, probably want to make a couple of signings, you know, because they want to continue their dominance up. Uh, Tottenham, you know, they definitely need signings. Whether they make signings or not, I don't know. Um, Arsenal, you know, they're going to want to make some signings. You know, I probably I presume Leicester, they're probably going to want to, you know, make some signings. So we have got to recruit well in this summer transfer window. But this summer transfer window is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's fourth transfer window as Manchester United manager because so far Solskjaer's enjoyed three transfer windows at the football club. He didn't recommend anyone in his first transfer window, but in the two previous windows he has brought five players in. Obviously, you know, he's made four permanent signings. Last summer, he brought Daniel James, Anwan Bissaka and Harry Maguire in. And in January, he brought Bruno Fernandes and Odina Gallo in. But Solskjaer, like I said to you before, he said at the start of his managerial tenure, he agreed this might feel and that 
he wants to make around nine signings, you know. And I think in this summer transfer window, you know, Solskjaer has said, you know, he wants to make at least three signings because he probably believes we need at least three signings, you know, if we are to be title contenders next season. You know, we have got to spend money to compete with the likes of Manchester City and Liverpool. Ed Woodward did recently say he does want to make three more signings after we have uh, reached an agreement for Jadon Sancho. And Solskjaer's already identified the areas in the squad where he does want to strengthen up because he's still areas in our squad uh, where Manchester United are definitely, you know, lacking. Where Man United are definitely lacking in that. But um, our transfer budget for this summer transfer window has already been revealed. You know, Solskjaer's got around £140 million to spend. Obviously, you know, before the resumption of the season, it had confirmed that we'd taken a £140 million loan, obviously, you know, to help us get the players that we want in this summer transfer window. Obviously, you know, we don't only, we're not only going to focus on the incomings in this summer transfer window, you know, we're also going to focus on the outgoings as well as the incomings because we're going to get rid of players in this summer transfer window and reflects on that will generate money and it will increase our transfer budget. I think we're going to get rid of at least seven players in this summer transfer window, maybe even more. Um, I think we're looking to get rid of Jesse Lingard. We're also looking to get rid of um, Andres Pereira. Well, I think we should get rid of Pereira because Pereira doesn't even get in the team. Obviously, you know, it would be very beneficial if we could get rid of Alexis Sanchez permanently um, because it would free up our wage bill completely. You know, Solskjaer did say he wants Sanchez back at Man United, but Sanchez says he doesn't want to come back to Man United. Don't forget recently, you know, Inter Milan had a loan plus an obligation to buy 15 million euros turned down uh, for Sanchez by Man United. You know, Inter Milan, I want to get him permanently or they're looking to extend his loan for another season then get him permanently. But I don't think we'll let Sanchez go out on loan for another season. I think uh, we want to get rid of Smalling and Rojo on permanent transfers because Smalling's out on loan with Roma at the moment and Rojo's out on loan at Estudiantes. Uh, we also want to get rid of Phil Jones. Um, I think we also need to get rid of Diego Delo because Diego Delo, he, I don't think he's good enough to represent Man United and he only made one start in the Premier League this season, didn't he? Uh, but he did have a few injuries earlier on in the season. Um, also to... Uh, do you think there's a possibility chance that Juan Mata could leave the football club? Maybe he won't in this summer transfer window, but he could maybe leave next year. You know, this has been Juan Mata's sixth season at Manchester United, but as you all know, Juan Mata doesn't even really get into the team now, but he still makes an impact when he does get a chance. Uh, we did pay just under £40 million from Juan Mata from Chelsea back in 2014, was it? We got him under the David Moyes era. We're going to loan some players out. It did say Solskjaer's going to decide on what players he's going to loan out sometime this week. Uh, we want to loan James Garner out. Swansea and Cardiff and Doncaster want him, apparently. Uh, we'll be looking to loan Dylan Levitt out. We'll be also looking to loan to Heath Chong out because he's obviously you know, not getting in the team. Uh, Alex Tuanzebe, Fossil Mento, I think you know we could also loan them out as well. You know, so we are going to loan quite a few players out. We really, really are. You know. But yeah, so we need to get rid of players in this summer transfer window. But to be fair, Solskjaer has got rid of a lot of the deadwood, you know, since he got recommended in to Manchester United and that. But I've got to say, you know, us getting qualification for the Champions League and finishing third are two fantastic achievements. Because let's put into the equation, this was Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's first full season at the football club. And not only that, earlier on in the season, we enjoyed our worst start ever to a Premier League season. And, you know, reflecting on how poor we was earlier on in the season, you know, you wouldn't have even thought we'd have finished in the top 10. But reflecting how poor we was, you know, Solskjaer was so close to getting the sack as Manchester United manager. He really, really was close to getting sacked. And at that point, there were socks of... Mauricio Pochettino coming in and there was also talks of Masmiliano Allegri coming to Manchester United at that point. But, you know, we've just seemed to have rejuvenated ourselves since January. You know, since that 2-0 home defeat to Burnley, you know, there's been a massive upturn in form. You know, just like Solskjaer was saying prior to the Leicester game, you know, he says like, you know, 
you know, the team has shown that they're going places, you know, he said, you know, the players are progressing, he also mentioned that, you know, the fitness levels have improved. We are unbeaten now in our last 14 Premier League games. Also put into the equation, went on a 19-game unbeaten run in all competitions until Chelsea beating us in the FA Cup semi-finals. And like I've said to you before, you know, I have seen improvements under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era. You know, like I said, our record against the top six sides throughout the course of the seasons was very, very good because we'd taken a good 18, 19 points against the top six sides throughout the course of the season. You know, I think Solskjaer promoted the youth very, very well. You know, he gave the young, well, some of the young players their chances. I think, to be honest with you, maybe, you know, next season, maybe some more of the youngsters need to get, you know, chances. But more or less, you know, since Solskjaer's coming, you know, everybody in general has been given their chances to express themselves. You know, I definitely, you know, think players have improved under Solskjaer, you know, especially, you know, the top players. I think Solskjaer's, Solskjaer's decision-making has slightly improved, but I think it needs to improve a bit more. Because throughout the course of the season, you know, there was a lot of games where Solskjaer, you know, was very tactically naive. But on the other hand, there were some games, you know, where he showed a lot of tactical flexibility in that. Uh, throughout the course of the season, though, Solskjaer did make a lot of rotation uh, because we, we did have a lot of injuries throughout the course of the season, especially the first part of the season, you know, we had quite a few injuries and all of that, and and all of that, we had quite, you know, we had quite a few injuries. But obviously, you no, know, don't forget there was a period uh, where Solskjaer went with the exact same team for five games in a row in the Premier League, and that's the first time we've done that since like what February nineteen ninety three. So that's like twenty seven years ago now. But I think now Solskjaer knows. His best formation. Obviously, you know, he knows his best 11 in that. You know, obviously, you know, if Manchester United do sign Sancho, if Man United do sign, say, Raul Jimenez in that, you know, Solskjaer would know how we would line up with them two players for next season. You know, if Jack Grealish came in as well, he'd know how to line up, you know, if Jack Grealish came into the club. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you saw my video that I did yesterday as well. Uh, Man United are considering resting several key players for our Europa League games next month. It is the knockout stages in that. Um, like I said to you, know, the Europa League is definitely a priority for us. Uh, because if we can win the Europa League, it will be our first trophy under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era. And it will be our first trophy in over three years. Uh, the last time when without winning the trophy for over three years, was back in the late 80s, was it? So, I want us to win the Europa League. We are actually, you know, the favourites to win the Europa League. You know, we have got Lask um, on the 5th of August, which is like, what, four days away now. It is the second leg, you know, we are five and up from the first leg. In the first leg, obviously, you know, it was Odi Nagalo that scored. I think he also got an assist, Dan James scored. I think Matt has scored, Greenwood scored, and Andres Pereira scored. So we are obviously you know, into the quarterfinals of the Europa League and the quarterfinals are played on the 10th and the 11th of August and that. So players that we could actually you know, rest in the Europa League for next month, for this uh, for this month, sorry, next month, it's this month now because it's the 1st of August, sorry. You know, we could rest players like Bruno Fernandes because he's more or less played in every game since he came from Sporting Lisbon in January. Harry Maguire, you know, he started every game I think in the Premier League this season for us so he could get given a rest. Possibly our man Bissaka could get given a rest because he'd lost his pace towards the end of the season, didn't he, a bit? Um, maybe Paul Pogba, Rashford could get given a rest. You know, Martial could get given a rest. I think probably Mason Greenwood will continue to play. Uh, Luke Charles, obviously, you not know, out for the, for, the, for the rest of the season. So, obviously, you know, he can't play anyway. So, Brandon Williams will play at left-back. Two hands have been Phil Jones have been out injured, but I think it did say they're going to be back. Uh, for this month, uh, so they may be you know, involved. Um, David De Gea could be dropped for the Europa League, and we could start Sergio Romero instead. So this is what I think you know Manchester United should do. Uh, one matter you know could be involved in the Europa League games. He's another one. Uh, so too you know could Daniel James. You know so um, there you go on that. 
But uh, like I said, for next season, Solskjaer's got to exceed expectations because our expectations next season will be to challenge for the Premier League title. It really, really will because we haven't won the Premier League since 2013. The last time we won it was in Alex Ferguson's last season and all of that. But uh, like I said, Solskjaer's been at the football club now over a year and a half. You know, I think he's been permanent Manchester United manager for a good 16 months. We give Solskjaer the job permanently, you know, reflecting on what he did in that three-month period when he was the interim manager. Um, like I've said to you, Solskjaer's got um, contract decisions to make because we've still got around eight players' contracts that are due to expire next year. So we've got to make a decision on them. But to be fair, we have extended a lot of players' contracts since Solskjaer came in to the football club and that. But reflecting how long Solskjaer's been here now, he's got that managerial experience behind him and he has learned quite a few quite a lot he has learned quite a lot but give him another season because it is a transition period and it has been a transition period for a while so there you go so anyway guys that's everything to update today drop your comments likes below on the channel if you do consider subscribe as always and take care god bless and i'll see you all again very very soon thanks for watching